In World Challenge, we aim to find projects or small businesses from around the world that have shown enterprise and innovation at a grassroots level. In World Challenge, you'll discover how small projects and businesses could really make a difference for a community, for the environment. In this episode, we present three projects in three countries. Fangi Town in the USA, Old School Thai in Thailand, and Afghan Hands in Afghanistan. These are tough times for San Francisco. The state of California is officially bankrupt, the economy is still reeling from the global financial downturn, and unemployment is now over 11%. The two graduates here are bucking the trend by building a business based on waste. It's six in the morning and Nikhil Aurora and Alejandro Vélez are doing something they never thought they would be doing when they attended one of California's top university business schools. Collecting waste coffee grounds and they have big plans for their business. We first heard about the, the, the whole idea at a lecture here at UC Berkeley's High School of Business and initially it was just the fact that you could take coffee grounds, used up coffee grounds, and grow gourmet mushrooms such as oyster, shiitake, ganoderma. America is addicted to coffee. There's something you gotta be able to do with that idea of using coffee grounds to grow mushrooms. That initially was extremely interesting to us and extremely exciting to actually have the, the, the potential, the possibility and the opportunity to actually take this waste and do something valuable with it and grow a valuable product. World coffee production is around 7 million tons a year and with less than 1% of the coffee bean ending up in the cup, that's a lot of waste. The caffeine in the grounds means that most plants cannot flourish in coffee alone. But mushrooms are different in humid conditions, they thrive on these pods containing only waste coffee grounds. The mushroom farm is an empty warehouse in a depressed part of San Francisco. These are not any old mushrooms, but gourmet oyster mushrooms much in demand in restaurants throughout the city. This is the Better Ventures Oyster Mushroom Warehouse, and uh, this is the first stage of the whole process. This is where Alex and I come in every morning, we bring the coffee in here, we mix it with the spawn, and we plant these bags. And uh, as the mushroom seed or the spawn starts to take over the substrate, the coffee gets covered in a white thin layer, which is mycelium. And once it's completely covered, we know it's ready for the next room. So this is the room where we actually shock the mushrooms. So it's kind of neat because the way mushrooms actually grow is when they feel like they're gonna die, the caps start coming out. So in order to do that, we either change the temperature, change the relative humidity, change the CO2 content in the bag. So if you look at these bags right now, they have been fully colonized by the mycelium. And then they're about three to five days, they're gonna be going to the fruiting room where they'll actually start growing. This is where everything kind of comes together. All the hard work starts paying off. So you can see the mushrooms literally start popping out of the substrate or the coffee. So it starts off, you can see, with small um, little primordia, so the mushroom's starting to form, and then over a couple of days, they start to grow and grow, and you get these beautiful kind of white oyster mushrooms. So have they found a viable business model that is also sustainable? The dean at their former business school is impressed. Being able to take something that is not only essentially of no value, but of negative value, it's a waste product. We have to deal with it, it's costly to deal with. And being able to transform that into something valuable is really very important. But at the end of the day, of course, the cost of that transformation, the scale at which it will have to occur, and the ultimate quality of what's produced, these are uncertainties that they're managing as best they can. If they're managed well and we get the right outcome, this is gonna be a booming business. Applying the lessons learned at business school, the team did its research on supply and demand. Consumers are kind of looking for more than just the taste. They want something that kind of makes them feel good as well. And what we're offering is an absolutely sustainable product. You know, there's uh, nothing in the environment that's been affected. In fact, we're improving the environment because they're purchasing our mushrooms. So, you know, we really believe that we're <coughs> providing a great product at the same time as taking care of the community. And you add those together, and I think it gives the best experience for consumers. 
There's been a dramatic growth in demand for organically grown produce in California and Berkeley in particular, where demand has risen by up to 21% every year for the past decade. Bing cherries have finally come to market. And but are the mushrooms grown on coffee grounds as good as their conventionally grown counterparts? Local radio personality Narsai David is a chef, a wine grower and food critic. I've tasted them and they're absolutely delicious. They taste like oyster mushrooms ought to taste. So it's not a matter of this tastes better than that or this is more nutritious than that. The fact that they can produce it sustainably with something which until they came along was a waste product, that's exciting. People are going to tune into that. People are going to really enjoy hearing that. With both demand and quality checked, the next step was to make sure the coffee shops would cooperate. In this town, Pete's coffee is a big catch. We really, as a matter of principle, want to be behind any uh, concept that feeds back into our community, that provides local employment, that makes use of a ground of, uh, of a material that's been produced here and really closes in a loop locally for our community, both in terms of employment and use of matter. It was so exciting. It just seemed an absolute no-brainer that we would cooperate with this and that we would get involved. Once Pete's agreed to let the team have their grounds, other smaller outlets followed suit. This year, Better Ventures plans to recycle more than 200 tonnes of coffee grounds. The mushrooms break down the caffeine in the grounds, leaving them ideal as compost for the Bay Area's organic farms. These coffee grounds have already been spent with mushrooms, and so if this is great for the soil. You uh, want a lot of mycorrhiza in your soils. In a nutshell, we're taking a waste stream and adding two additional uh, kind of value elements to it in that we're creating food and two, we're creating great compost. So uh, it's kind of transforming a waste stream into a much more valuable product. The efforts of Better Ventures have also got the support of the top academic at Berkeley. We have a long tradition uh, here at Berkeley of uh, social action and commitment to social justice. And in modern times, I would say our students actually, especially our undergraduate students, have really been caught up with the issue of sustainability. Our students have had really remarkably creative ideas, and I must say this one, uh, which in some ways is so simple, it's elegant in its simplicity, and therefore I liked it particularly. And another breakthrough for Better Ventures. The Berkeley outlet of the giant organic and health foods chain, Whole Foods Market, is now selling the mushrooms. As they proudly display the fruit of their labours, the business graduates dream of becoming tycoons of useful recycling. Thailand is one of the world's most popular tourist destinations, attracting five million visitors a year. Most head for the beaches, where the development of mass tourism is changing the way of life forever. The North Andaman region of Thailand is attracting a new kind of tourist, keen to experience the culture for package tourism, and just as keen to leave it that way. The North Andaman region of Thailand was hit hard by the tsunami in 2004 that killed more than 228,000 people. The disaster focused attention on the plight of coastal villages. North Andaman Tsunami Relief is an agency set up to deal with the aftermath in coastal communities. It's now broadening its work with an ecotourism arm, Andaman Discoveries. What makes Andaman Discoveries different is its mission to attract visitors who want to contribute to developing local communities without contaminating the traditional way of life. One scheme is the Home Stay Programme, which allows visitors to board in the home of a Thai family. Both sides are supplied with language booklets to help them communicate. What we found is if people try and speak a little bit of Thai, then they loosen up a bit because it's always funny trying to hear somebody else trying to speak a different language. The visitors get a quick introduction to the lifestyle they're about to experience. Another thing that we need to remember is that if we are going into a house or a temple, we need to take our um, shoes off. 
So if you've got flip-flops or thongs, that'll make it a lot easier for um, getting in and out. This is a dried fish. It's quite strong. The Thai people will eat pork soup in the morning. They have um, fried chicken, which might seem quite strange for us eating fried chicken in the morning. Kevin Huang and Kathy Lee arrive at the village of Tung Dap, an island village of around 200, mostly Moken people, a distinct cultural group within Thailand. For the travelers, students at the University of California on a study trip, this is a rare chance to experience local life while staying with one of the villagers. The tourists gain a much deeper understanding of the customs and culture of a remote village. And the villagers who put them up get another source of income while retaining their way of life and culture. Although it took some getting used to. The first time the guests came here, my heart was beating like this. I was so nervous and I wanted to hide in the back of the house. Where have you been? Been. Been. Yeah. It's rainy, yeah. From me, from top. One knee, from top. <laughs> Unlike the typical tourist resorts, here it's the travellers who have to adapt to the local way of life. Going to see the Moken people was a real eye-opening experience for me, and I really felt a connection with Nu and with Pinoy. I, I don't know, I, I fell in love with the community. Going to the Moken village, it was absolutely a great experience. Something I feel like I couldn't do on my own. We were taken in by this family that accepted us with open arms basically and kind of integrated us as part of their own. And I don't think I could get that experience anywhere else and I'm really grateful that I was able to do that. 